If you want to know the truth about mask wearing and be aware of some of the lies that people like Dr. Shiva are spreading about masks, then this is the video for you. I'm Dr. Wilson, and this is Debunk the Funk, where I bring you the facts to keep you informed so that you can stay safe. Let's jump right in. Now, Dr. Shiva is a guy who's been pretty vocal about his pretty unique ideas and recommendations surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic. A few weeks ago, he released a video about mask wearing, where he blatantly misinterprets science and lies to his audience about the effectiveness of wearing a mask in preventing the spread of disease. Let's listen to a little bit of what he has to say before I completely dismantle it. What is the truth about these masks? What is the truth? Um, you have a lot of people, uh, a lot of grifters. The CDC is recommending school students to wear masks. Does the CDC pay any attention to actual science as a warrant as that masks are risky and ineffective? Yes, the CDC does listen to the science, which is why they recommend mask wearing. Unfortunately, Dr. Shiva doesn't listen the same way. And the question is, are the medical masks better than the cloth masks? That's one question. What about the N95 masks, which we're not supposed to be using, which means we, the citizens, and do masks affect uh, us in any other way? So that's really the questions that we want to um, we want to ask. He actually left an important question off that list, which is, is wearing a mask better than not wearing a mask? He seems to think the answer is no, but science definitely says yes. You know, they basically tell you, in fact, they tell you how to make a homemade cloth face covering. This is right on the CDC site. And they don't really talk a lot about if it works or not. They just tell you you should do this. So it's quite interesting. So it's not hard to find that information. I'll even do that for you a little bit later. And, and right now, there's no conclusive clinical evidence at all for the effectiveness of face masks. And the possible reason is virus size is too small to be filtered out. But here's a surgical mask above, and here's a cloth mask that you may see wearing. But again, cloth masks can include bandanas, etc. At this point, it's important to understand how COVID-19 and most other respiratory viruses actually spread. And there are four main ways that this happens. The most likely way to catch a respiratory virus is being in close or direct contact with someone who is infected. The second most common way is through droplets. Third most common is through what's called fomites. And fourth most common is through what's called aerosols. When we're talking about masks preventing the spread of a virus from a sick individual, we're talking about it stopping the spread of droplets, fomites, and aerosols. The difference between those three particles is the size. Droplets are relatively big, fomites are a little smaller, and aerosols are really small. No matter what kind of mask you're wearing, it's going to make a big difference in the number of droplets you're able to actually spread. That's because droplets are relatively big and can easily get caught up in the multi-layered mask. So Dr. Shiva talking about the size of the virus already shows that he doesn't know what he's talking about. Now, when I went through the literature, I tried to get the most recent literature. So the four papers we curated down to three of them from 2020, one of them is from around 2015, 2017, okay? So we're gonna go through these. Okay, so your time is valuable, which is why we're not going to go over all four of those papers that Dr. Shiva picked out. Instead, I'm going to summarize two of them, then show you what Dr. Shiva thinks they mean, and then show you some research that Dr. Shiva conveniently left out. This first paper looked at what happens when a patient coughs into a Petri dish without a mask, with a cotton mask, or with a surgical mask, and then they tested for viral particles in that Petri dish. The problem is there are only four patients in this entire study. And the results they uncovered were wildly inconsistent. In one patient, they were able to detect viral particles in their cough while they were wearing a surgical mask, but not when wearing a cotton mask. And in another patient, they were able to first not detect any viral particles while they were not wearing a mask, wearing a surgical mask, or wearing a cotton mask. But then when they tried again with not wearing a mask, they were able to detect viral particles. At best, this study is sloppy and inconclusive. Let's see if Dr. Shiva agrees. Well, you can see here the evidence is quite inconclusive. So if you look at the Petri dish. Wow, do we agree on this? Just look at patient one. There's not that much difference between wearing a mask and not wearing a mask and wearing a cotton mask or wearing a, um, a uh, surgical mask. Of course, he's ignoring the data right in front of him, misrepresenting it and lying to his audience. I mean, why on earth would he say it's inconclusive and then make a conclusion? That's not how science works. The size of this is 
uh, of, the, of the coronavirus is expected to be much smaller uh, than the actual, um, you know, the, 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 the holes in the mask. So it's basically like mosquitoes going through a chain link wire fence. Again, it's not the size of the actual viral particle that matters here, which by the way is on the order of nanometers. It's the size of the droplets that it spreads in, which are much bigger and get caught up in the mask. So again, Dr. Shiva is using a really bad analogy and showing that he doesn't know what he's talking about. This next paper that Dr. Shiva talks about looks to compare the effectiveness of cloth masks versus surgical masks in a hospital setting for healthcare workers. To do this comparison, they had three groups of healthcare workers. One group wore surgical masks, another group wore cotton masks, and a third group was a control group. But this control group consisted of people who wore a mix of surgical and cotton masks. Only 1% of people in this group actually reported wearing either no mask or an N95 mask. And then they just measured how often these three groups got sick with influenza-like symptoms. And what they found was really not surprising. They just found that surgical masks are more effective than cotton masks in preventing healthcare workers from getting sick. So based on these results, the authors recommend that healthcare workers in a hospital setting use surgical masks instead of cotton or cloth masks. But what does Dr. Shiva think this study means? This was a study that it, it basically showed that cloth uh, masks increase in infection risk in the healthcare workers. So I'm going to walk you through this. So what they did here. Wait, wait, wait. Really? Did he really just say that? But the bottom line, you can see that the cloth masks, according to this, are going to cause more influenza-like symptoms. It sounds like he's trying to tell his audience that wearing a mask is going to make you sick. And he's using this paper to support that, but this paper doesn't have a no mask control. It only compares cotton masks to surgical masks. So th that can't be what he means, right? He's, he's too smart for that. He, it, he must be, I must be misinterpreting him, right? This is why the masks are supposedly being promoted is that I'm a carrier and someone else doesn't have it. So if I cough, I don't want them to get it. Well, the first research paper is clearly showing it's going to go through anyway. The second research paper is showing that you wearing it are going to increase your chance of more influenza-like symptoms. So you're putting yourself at risk. If you have it asymptomatic, you may increase your chance of getting influenza. So finding that cotton masks are not as effective as surgical masks in Dr. Shiva's mind means that cotton masks are going to make you more sick than if you don't wear a mask at all. Ugh. I mean, he either didn't read the paper or he's just lying. You can decide which, but either way, if you want a reason why you should never listen to this guy, there you have it. And now, as promised, I'll show you a little bit of research that Dr. Shiva decided to leave out of his holistic message. Here are two papers showing that masks were actually really effective in slowing the spread of the original SARS outbreak in 2003. One of these papers even estimates that always wearing a mask when going out was associated with a 70% reduction in risk of being infected with SARS. I'll put the links to these papers and everything we talked about and much more in the description. The scientific consensus overall is that masks help reduce the transmission of respiratory viruses. But the consensus also says that mask wearing alone is not enough. It's like wearing a seatbelt in a car without a working airbag. You need other things, such as practicing good hygiene, which includes frequent hand washing. Taking all these precautions together is what's going to make us as safe as possible and get us out of quarantine as fast as possible. So when you go out, do wear a mask if possible, do wash your hands, and don't listen to Dr. Shiva, please. That's going to do it for this week's video. I'm Dr. Wilson. This has been Debunk the Funk, and if you liked it, maybe subscribe and join me next week where I'll be taking a look at a Facebook anti-vaxxer video. See you then.